I'm Corey Bennett, uh, a mixed media artist, and we're here in my studio in Paulsbo, Washington, and uh, we create magic here. Create magic here. Create magic here. So today we're kind of just splashing some paint. Really we're working on a, a series that inspires the inner hero in us all. You know, I'm trying to invoke people to take a step back and, and look at some portraits um, that have changed my life in a way and hoping that it can affect them and change their life in the way it's affected me. But not only to understand what has come, but what will come by taking this imagery and letting it inspire us to, to do something with our voice and our lives, trying to make this world a better place. I love paint. I think I got a lot of it, you know? So I'm like always mixing up paints. Uh, just bucket. Teal's my favorite color, you know? I don't know if you're gonna see a painting without some teal in it. Made this earlier this morning. When I'm working, I always like to work on like multiple canvases. I'm not like your your typical like, oh, let's let's be clean about it. I love to make a mess. I think that's the therapy of it all. So really, I'm always working on like five different canvases at once. Never waste any paint. Try to try to use it all, you know. I grew up in Vegas. You know, the surroundings in which I grew up, there was just vibrance everywhere. Lights, uh, people dressing wild and stuff like that. So that's always my thing. It's just like vibrant colors. It really just has this therapy, right? Like the colors themselves uh, inspire. They really, you see it and you're just like, ooh, ooh, I feel good, you know? <laughs> went to school uh, in San Luis Obispo at Cal Poly and I thought I wanted to do architecture. So I started taking like construction management classes and in that they had, okay, you gotta take at least one intro to art class or something like that, you know? So I took a class and I was like, ooh, I, I made a mistake, right? I was like just splashing paint. I was like, this feels way better than sitting in AutoCAD, like trying to make these straight lines and, get inside the box. So then I went to school and graduated with art graphic design and thought I was gonna build websites or like do the back end stuff. And I found myself sitting at a computer all day. And then I found myself uh, in a studio painting and I was like, wow, this this is amazing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go with this. And so I kept doing that and um, one opportunity led to the next and I was able to show some work at a local coffee shop bar kind of thing. And uh, from there, I was able to make, make some connections with collectors and people who were interested in the art. And it's funny how you can meet one or two people that show a connection to your art. And that's all it really takes, you know? Somebody sees that you're doing something positive and they wanna be a part of that, you know? So I found one collector and within like the first month of us meeting, he probably bought 10 paintings from me, you know? It was the first time I ever really sold any art. And I was like, whoa, like this can actually function as a business. So yeah, it's crazy how one person can really make a difference in, in an artist's career and just what it is that they're doing, you know? It really just makes you think about things differently. You know, you're like, first and foremost, it gives you that push. You're like, wow, I think maybe I am doing this right, you know? Cause like as an artist, it's hard to define what success really is. You gotta define that yourself. And um, I think early on, I was painting just strictly for myself, right? And then someone came along and said, oh, I really like what you're doing. What if you did it, you know, like, oh, I have an idea. What if you did a portrait of this person, you know? And then instantly we're, we're working together, you know? Oh, what if, what if you did a portrait of this musician that inspired me? And so every time I do a new portrait, I feel like I learned something. It's almost like a class. So especially with this body of work, I tried to find some iconic voices that have done something positive that I didn't really know much about. And then by researching that person and finding out the, the details that I wanted to put in those paintings, I really, 
created a, a dialogue and a relationship with that person a little bit deeper, you know, and with my kids, it's been awesome because I'm able to tell my kids about it as I'm learning, you know, they're like, who's that person? Like, why did you decide to paint that person? And I can go into detail and describe how I've been affected and like they've been affected too. They just don't even know it yet. You know what I mean? Especially as we get into um, political and musical talent. Instantly when I get in the studio, I'm energized, you know, like I see this paint, I can touch the paint. I'm like, oh man, this feels so good. I'm gonna splash this paint. A lot of the times when people are playing music, you're, you're like playing the drums or something like that. You let out your emotion and your anger on the drums and then you can walk away and you feel lighter. I feel when you come to the studio, it's the same kind of thing. You can splash the paint, you can throw it hard or you can just be gentle with it, you know, but you leave feeling like you've let go of something, you know. You know, I think one thing that makes my art a little different from a lot of the iconic pop things that you see going on right now is, you may have seen this image somewhere or you may have seen another artist do this image or something, but what I try to do is from far away, you see this beautiful image that I've created with a spray paint and acrylic paint, but then as you get closer, you can start seeing these small details of paper, maps, um, vintage articles, sheet music, fairy terminal schedules and stuff like that. And these are the things that in my day to day, I find I'm going through. So not only are you seeing the Chicago maps from where Michelle Obama was uh, raised and grew up and really became the person that she is today, you'll see Seattle maps, you'll see a map of Paul's bow and, and uh, Edmund's Kingston ferry schedule um, because that's me. <laughs> Try not to hit you, you know? <laughs> it's so funny, especially starting off, you know, most artists are like showing in a coffee shop or, you know, got a couple pieces at this bar or something like that, you know? And then there comes a point where now, okay, now maybe I'm trying to get into a gallery or I'm trying to collab with someone that can help my voice come up, right? And Bima has elevated my voice to a level that I could not do by myself. And nowhere around Kitsap County is there a platform for a voice at this caliber, right? So being able to be in a place so open, so modern, that it shows the work at a whole new level. It's not sitting with someone else's work, right? You, you go to a gallery, you're gonna find eight, eight artists rather than just one. And the paintings are very close, you know? So being able to show at a space that's so elevated has been just hands down undescribable, you know? So I'm very excited about the show and the message and the impact that it'll have. Art becomes a bridge to be able to open up conversation about certain topics that might be tough to swallow, you know? Or most people want to avoid, you know, it's like you and I, maybe I bring up politics or I bring up that I'm interested in this and you, oh man, I don't know about that, you know, but if I put in a painting that, you know, maybe is very ambiguous, like I don't know who that face is or something, but then I go in to describe that, that face isn't actually a person, it's a, it's a place, it's a mindset of where you can go to feel free or whether it be freedom of speech or freedom to let go of whatever it is you're holding on to.